Firefox. Today we're going to take a look on how to do a couple of cool visualizations in Power BI. And the best part of it is we're going to see how you can embed these visualizations in your Power Apps Canvas. Stick around, give it a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure to subscribe. So here we are in our Power BI desktop application. I've already loaded the data that I use in one of my previous videos, uh, the financial sample. And as you can see here, it's just a bunch of um, numbers uh, for, for, for country product, units sold, manufacturing price, and so on and so on, and a date column as well. And um, yeah, let's see how we can visualize it. So first I would like to create a map. So I really like this field map, but I'm going to go with the other one since uh, later in the video we'll see that this looks better in Power Apps, in my opinion. So here in the location place we can put the country and this should now recognize the countries we are talking about and should mark them on the map. As you can see here it has recognized the countries North America, US and so on and so forth. But the dots are have the same size. Reason for that is because it doesn't know where the difference is. It does, just knows the location, but doesn't know if the, these dots should be bigger because of numbers being here higher or lower. So for that, on the right hand side, as you can see here, we have legend, latitude, longitude is for more precise location. Uh, if you're going for um, some like specific places in a country. And here's a size which is interesting for us. So if we take a look at the data, we have here the country that we're using and also the units sold. If we, for example, want to show that where in which country were the most units sold, uh, make sure that you select the map again and you need to select then the units sold that will automatically be placed in the size section. As you can see now, it is showing the bubbles in a different size. So France has 240,000 sold, units sold and Germany has 201,000. So the difference here is significant. And um, you can also uh, change the how it lo looks like. So here the in the uh, formatting section you can you can change the data colors for example that it shows uh, based on a, on a, a condition or um, the category that it's not showing here, if you select that, it will now show the name of the city, of the country in this case. Uh, the bubbles, you can change the size of them. So you can have them really big or really small, which, um, yeah, that's too small, but something like that, so that you can see the difference between countries. Next are the map styles. Now we are seeing the road uh, map style, which is okay. Um, yeah, it's it's like a, like a navigation system. Um, I really like this uh, dark theme. Uh, I think this is easier on the eye, but it's not very um, yeah, it's not very easy to to distinguish with the cities and so on and so forth. So if you if you're not going for that precision, um, you can use this. Otherwise, you should go with one of the other themes. You have your light theme, which is just brighter than Arial, the grayscale, uh, and then the road, which was the one we had. Yeah, so that that's it for the for the map. Um, I really like this feature and it is also very responsive, it works well and um, yeah, let's leave it here and create a new page and take a look on the other visualizations. So one of the most common visualizations are the bar charts. So you can have the stacked bar, you can have the stacked column chart and uh, cluster bar and so on. So bars and columns are very, very popular. Um, so let's, let's take a look how that looks like. So here, for example, we can put a, a bar chart, the simple one, the first one, and let's put the country in the axis, and then we can use the, the profit as value. As you can see here, we can visualize that which for a country has the highest profit. And um, it's showing the numbers in a weird way we, we need to do something with the numbers, but that's not the point of, the, of this video. So we are going just taking a look at the visualizations and the possibilities. And um, we can also use, for example, another one. This is the stacked column bar. We can use the product and also the sale price. So for a product, we have the sale price here. So Paseo, 
VGT, Velo, Amarilla, and so on. These are the sale price per each product. Next, we can take a look at the clustered bar chart. Let's place it down there and take the country again. And here we can select like multiple values. For example, you can do that also in a similar in the, in the simple uh, bar chart. But if we put here, for example, next to profit, something like uh, sale price, it will put it next to it. So it, it's not very distinguishing. But um, but if we use the clustered bar chart to have the sale price and the manufacturing price, you can you see it puts it below each other. So this is like a cluster. It's clustering the bar charts uh, together based on the a value, which is country this time. The same thing is also the difference between stacked column chart and clustered column chart. So if you put this below the normal the normal uh, stacked column chart, we can use here the country again and also the manufacturing price and sale price, as you can see here. But in this case here, we would see it inside. So that's that's the difference. So you can see it next to each other. Let's create another page and take a look on some different uh, visualization options. We can take a look at the ribbon chart, for example, and bring here also again the country and the product and also the products in the legend now. So I know we need a value. Values can only be numbers. So let's bring the uh, COGs. And this is now showcasing that the United States of America, Passau, Canada, Passau, and so on. So this is separating based on product and uh, country and COGs. Here we have also a waterfall uh, diagram. You can also use here country and discounts, for example. You can see that uh, the discounts in United States of America are 2.3, almost 2.3 uh, million. And this is the total then, which is adding everything up. We can also take a look at the final uh, visualization. Let's take country and um, profit. And here you can see it visualizes the profit in a different way. Um, it's like a bar chart, but yeah, it, it's, it starts from the small one and goes to the highest um, numbers at the top. Next, I want to create another page and uh, let's see one of the, the mother of all visualizations, which is a pie chart. And uh, pie chart is pretty simple, actually. Here, for example, we can put the country again and the manufacturing price, and this will separate the pie based on the values. And it will also show percentages if you want so. And you can even change the way how the data has been shown. So here, for example, the data colors are fixed. Uh, you can change them. The data labels here, it says that it's showing data value percent of total, but you can only show category, for example, in the name. Um, you can show uh, data value, which is the numbers. And let's put this value being shown in two decimal places, as you can see here, and the units is on none. So now it's showing the, the right way, the 14,000 for the manufacturing price by country. And uh, if you want to show the country name here as well, you can have the category and the data value. And then what you can do is turn off the legend. Now you have a bigger pie and um, it's showing the name of the country and the value inside. Another similar um, visualization like the pie is the donut. So the donut, let's make it big as well, put it next to it. And here we can bring the country and the data sales. So as you can see, it looks the same, just in the donut form with a hole in the middle instead of a pie. And here we can change the values as well. We can see the shape, for example. You can make this also, you can make this a pie, literally. So you can you can make this thinner and so on, looks maybe a bit nicer. And the data labels, if you don't want that, you can use category and data value, put this here to two decimal places and turn the display units to none. And this is now is showing um, the sales by country. If you turn off the legend here, you will see it looks very similar. Another easy way to visualize data is by using cards. So a card has only one field place and will only display one data. But this you can use, for example, in a combination with another um, visualization. For example, let's bring back one of the pies and bring the country and the data sales, for example, here. And next to it, we can create a card. This card should not be this big. 
And if we here bring the country, now it's showing Canada for default because it's shown the first country. But if you select United States, it will say the name of United States. And you can use it as a title, for example, so that it knows uh, which country you are now looking at. Because imagine having multiple visualizations on a screen and you have selected one of the filters, like here, for example, about. So you can use a card to visualize that, like a title. And it's dynamic, it will change every time you select something different, like here. So yeah, you can also put a, a, a function in it so that it's, it's blank as long as it's nothing selected in the visualizations um, section of the screen and so on and so forth. So it doesn't show any name by default. So cards are pretty useful. You can also have a multi-row card, which is pretty much the same, but it is used for showing multiple data. So this one, for example, it's not showing the first, it's showing all countries. And when you select Canada, it will only show Canada. In another screen, I want to show you the table and the matrix. So at the beginning, if you have them both next to each other, you cannot distinguish which one is which. So, but if you select it, you will see here, this is highlighting the table. And this one is a matrix. And in the row section, you can see that the table only gets one field and the matrix gets a row, column and values, which it means that a matrix can have a hierarchy inside. So in the matrix, you can have multiple values in each other, but in the table, you only get to add multiple rows. So let's test the table first. As you can see here, we have only one value field. And if we put the country there, it will only list the countries. But you can select then the profit and it will put the profit next to it. You can select the sale price, you can put the also next to it, unit sold, everything. So it will create an Excel-like table. And it automatically puts the total next to it, which you can uh, turn off and on in the total section of the, of the um, formatting uh, tab. You can turn that off and then format the total is off and so on. In the matrix uh, table, let's make this a little bit bigger, we can have the country, we can have the product, which is bringing out the column, and then we can have the units sold. And this will now showcase the country in this column, and we'll separate the products in each column, and we create a total column. So you can, you can move this around, you can put the product inside of the country uh, as a row, and this will then now um, create a hierarchy. So it will list all the products for each country inside each country. So as you can see here, this is now showing every product for Canada, every product for France, and so on and so forth. If you move it to the column section, it will create a column for each product. So the matrix is more powerful than the table because it is more flexible. It allows you to do to visualize the data in uh, different ways. One very important visualization is the slicer. So the slicer can be used in different ways, but the way almost everybody uses it is as a filter. So here, if you want to give the user the ability to filter based on country, you can select the slicer to create the visualization on the screen and then select country. It also takes only one field, country. So if you now select Canada, it will filter the whole screen in uh, for Canada. Same for France and every other visualization that you have on your screen. So here you can delete it. And if you don't like these checkboxes, which I prefer because you see all the options, but it can be sometimes um, not very handy because if you have a lot of data, you will then have to have them all in your screen. It takes much more space than this option. So here you have the drop down, and you can select the drop down option. So if you select that, you can make the visualization then much smaller and have the drop down here selecting the filter that you need. There are many more filters in um, Power BI and uh, like R and Python visualizations that you need then to write some code for that. Um, and you can also in these three dots here in the ellipses get more visuals. You can either import them from a file if you have them on your machine, or you can remove a visual you don't like or you don't use, or restore default visuals if you have deleted one of the default visuals, and even get more visuals from the marketplace. If we select that, it will load the marketplace and the app source, you could say that from your organization if you have created some or the, from the app uh, marketplace where you can download them. 
And there are many, many visualizations out there. Here's the, here are the categories. And the ones that have this blue tick uh, next to it are um, official uh, certified visualizations from Microsoft. So now that we saw how we can visualize data in Power BI, let's take a look how we can bring these visualizations into our Canvas app. For that, I need to make sure that I publish this into our... I need to save it first. Let's save it here. Demo PB. And then I need to publish it to my workspace. This will take a second. One eternity later. As you can see here, I have now published the Power BI desktop that we just created in the Power BI web service. And uh, to be able to get the application to see and find my visualizations, I have to create a dashboard because what we just created was a report and uh, Power Apps cannot get reports into the canvas. So for that, you can select the report you just created. And here you can see the pages, this is our map. And here on the right hand side of every visualization, it says pin visual, it has a pin icon on it. If you select that, it will now uh, ask you where you want to pin this dashboard or you know, on which dashboard you want to pin it. And um, I don't want to pin in this existing dashboard since this is another one. I want to create a new one, select and name it demo dash and pin it over there. Next, I want to go to another page and grab one of these also. So I need this one, sale price, manufacturing price by country. So pin this in this existing dashboard this time since we created that. And I also want here, for example, let's pin this one as well. And I also want this matrix table. Let's pin that as well. Okay, so now if we go back to my workspace, select the dashboard we just created, and we can see here we have created a dashboard, which we can move around, we can make it bigger, we can make this one bigger as well. And this is our dashboard. So this one can now be seen and found from Power Apps. So for that, let's go to Power Apps and uh, see how we can bring it in. So here we are in a Power App canvas and um, I will not make any uh, changes in the app. So I just want to show you how to bring the data from Power BI into an app. So for that, you have to go to the insert ribbon at the top left hand side of your screen. And here where it says charts, if you open the drop down, it says Power BI tile. So it says share data visualization by adding Power BI tile to your app. If you select that, it will bring this section of the visualization here and you can remove it wherever you want. And here on the right hand side, it is searching for the data. So first it needs to know on which workspace. So since I only have my workspace in this demo tenant, I will select that. Next you want to select the dashboard you just created. We just created the demo dash dashboard, so I will select that. And here's where you select the tiles. So we have in our dashboard one, two, three, four tiles. And as you can see here, one, two, three, four tiles. So let's select the manufacturing price. It will load out now the visualization and you can resize it, of course. And to bring another tile, you have to do that again. So you select chart, Power BI tile bring it next to it. So I want to bring the map now. So the map is called units sold. Select the workspace, the dashboard, and also units sold. So this now will load the map. It does not look that great, but because uh, it has this huge uh, chin at the top or forehead. But um, anyways, it should serve the purpose. And next, I want to bring the other two tiles, which was which was this one. And you can also copy and paste this tile you just created. And here, if you select it, you can switch, you can change it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it looks terrible, but you get the point how it's, it's not about the looks, it's about the works, how it works. And uh, yeah, so as you can see here, you select play, you can work with the data. If you select it, it will open Power BI. Yes, yeah, you can see the data is live, so you can hover upon it and see the numbers. Um, it's coming directly from Power BI. And here you can also select, move the map and so on. Um, if you don't want the user to be able to select the data, because if you select it, it will open Power BI. If you don't want that, you can make the visualizations to be um, not editable. You can, you can make them to be only viewable. 
So for example, this one can be also in view mode, this one also in view mode, and this one as well. Now they cannot select anything. So it's just viewing the data. And then they can also not see the tooltip that hovers up if you hover upon the, the tiles, which is not very good, of course, because nobody can see, for example, the rest of the data here, you can do nothing anymore. But these are the possibilities so that you know them. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Um, there's, of course, obviously a lot more you can do with that. It's uh, a an, an tremendous amount of visualizations you can build, you can download, you can upload and whatever. Uh, and in your Power App, you can bring all of them <laughs> if, you, if you need them. So, um, but I just want to show you how, how that's done real quick. And uh, I hope you liked it. If you did so, please give a thumbs up to the video and make sure that you subscribe to the channel. That will mean a lot to me and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.